and we're now joined on set by Colgate head coach Dick Biddle. First of all, coach, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's good to be here. All right, now I was speaking to Coach Marone this morning and he referred to you as a regional coaching legend, comparing you to the likes of Joe Paterno, <laughs> Coach Ford at Albany. What do you think of a comment like that? Well, they need to pay me like that. they pay those guys. <laughs> I, I, I think it's because I've been here so long. So I think if you've been at a place long, I think you establish a reputation. For being a football player, not an athlete, I'll take a football player. I really appreciate it. Now, Coach brought up uh, first, and then I asked him about it specifically about you, but he said that, you know, especially with the style at FCS, it's in, not uh, in terms of scheme and the style of attacking. Younger coaches are better off starting here. So what do you think about that? Well, I think the thing that we have is, you know, you only get a certain number of coaches. So if you are coaching here, you're actually coaching. I think in some of your Division One schools, your bowl series, I mean, you have a lot of guys that do a lot of the, you know, operations or whatever here we don't have that so we're limited in number and I think you know you come in as a young coach or whatever you have a position you have to learn what's going on and I, I think you really you know are able to learn football coach football I think the other thing is you know the kids that we deal with maybe a little different mentality it, 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 it helps you with that experience and I think when you do go to Division One, I, I think you appreciate what you have. And but I think the, the level we play is a lot of good coaches, and you really got to coach. And uh, you know, you don't maybe have out athlete, athlete a lot of people. You know, you really got to work at it. You can't make mistakes, so you really have to pay attention to detail as a coach. And I think that's the thing that really molds a lot of coaches at this level. And you started at Allegheny College, if I'm correct. Yeah. Then you came here, and then you moved on to. I guess now FBS programs, Navy, hey. Minnesota, Virginia mm -hmm. Tech. What did you learn here at Colgate that you brought to the next level? Well, I mean, when I first came here, <clears throat> way back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, Colgate was Division One, And uh, I got the job through, you know, as I knew somebody here that knew somebody here. So when I came here, it was uh, Fred Dunlop was here, and, and Colgate was a pretty well-known school, and we were competing at the Division One level. Uh, but it was a good academic school, and... Uh, uh, we were very successful then. I think we played Syracuse a couple of times. That was the first time that we renewed the, uh, uh, the series with Syracuse after, I think, the 50s or when Jim Brown played. And I can remember we played two games up at the Dome at that time. They were pretty competitive games. Uh, but then I had the opportunity. I was a young coach, and I had the opportunity to, to go to Virginia Tech, which was a Division One school. And, uh, and I went that route for about 10 years. I went from Virginia Tech to Minnesota to Navy. And then I came back here as an assistant. And, uh, fortunate enough to get the head coaching job but I, I just think it was uh, a good opportunity for me and uh, I think I've been fortunate unlike a lot of people I've coached at every level of football division three division one double a and division one and uh, I think you learn from that and I, I think you learn to appreciate what you have what is the the mentality been that you've instilled in the players that has kept this program on top for so long well I think it was 95 that they were 11 and I took it in 96 so uh, I, but I think uh, I had been at Colgate before, so I kind of understood uh, what needed to be done and some of the distractions you have and what you needed. You had to find a special type player. But I think the biggest thing that I learned when I took the job was that uh, uh, I was talking to Jack Bruin, who was a successful basketball coach. We struggled the first three or four games, and he told me you need to be yourself and do what you believe in. And I, and I went back to some of the things I believed in, and I just felt like that we were so close that if we could just get a win underneath our belt, uh, that once you start winning and the kids feel that, that, you know, they just needed to get a win. And I think we got the fifth game of the game. We played Brown down here and we returned the opening kickoff for touchdown. And we won and the players got excited and we were able to build off that. And I think the big thing was we ended up having a winning record. We won, we won six and five. And I just think that the, uh, that turned the program around and uh, uh, we're, you know, we've been very successful. For them. But I just think it was just a, an attitude and, I kind of dwell back on that and let the players know about that, that those kids didn't have the things that they have, and I think you kind of build off that. And right now the expectations are pretty high here, so I don't know if that's good or bad now. But, you know, now we go 6-5 and five and they, they want to run me out of town. So. Now, 2003 was a big year for the program. Didn't come home with the title, but it was also the last time that Colgate, I believe, played an FBS team in Buffalo, yeah. uh, a team you beat. Yes. So I guess playing Syracuse now, how, first of all, how come you decided to do it? What, to play Syracuse? Yeah. Uh, that was really between the 80. I think what happened to Syracuse, I think North, we were supposed to play Northeastern, and I think they dropped them. And we had Dartmouth on our schedule, and I think Dartmouth wanted to get us off the schedule. So it was just uh, something that the ADs, you know, worked out. So and, and I think, you know, there's a payout that Colgate's going to get a little bit. But, you know, uh, you know, 
sometimes I wonder why we're playing them because they're a Division One school, and it's a really stretch game for us. But you know, you have to look at it. You want to give your kids a chance to play, and I, it's an opportunity they'll remember the rest of their life. So that's really how it came about. Just kind of zooming out, what do you think of FBS teams playing FCS teams, paying them to bring them in? Well, I think you need to look at. It. There's two different ways of doing it. See, we're, you know, we're a championship series team, but we don't give scholarships, so we're not like the other FCS schools. Where, they're given scholarships. Our, 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 our thing is a little more unique. I mean, when we play a Division One team, I mean, it's really, you know, you're kind of at a handicap. We don't have scholarship players. I mean, our kids, so a lot of our kids are paying $50,000 to go to school and they're playing football because they love them. We don't have the numbers. So, I mean, there's a, there's a difference when we do it. Now, when you got, you know, with the number of scholarships in Division One now down to 85 and 65 in Division One AA, there's, you know, you know, that's why you see a lot of the upsets. So I, I think we're a little bit different, but, you know, that, that's the unique thing about us playing and beating, you know, beating a Buffalo that's, and, and going to national championships on scholarships. I just, I just think that's a neat thing. Morning distractions this week. Go to class, studies of football.